many friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome to Coffee and Crochet with Sarah. Now, this is our live YouTube podcast. I've had a lot of questions, again, about why we are not doing our live videos on Facebook. And all I can tell you is I'm done with that, and we're on YouTube now. <laughs> Not that it's always perfect on YouTube either. Anytime you deal with electronics and technology, there can always be issues. I was a little concerned today. We're kind of in a snow blizzard. They're calling it a weather something. I can't remember. But we're supposed to stay in and not leave our houses because it's super windy and super snowy. And the snow is drifting. <laughs> So, it's minus one, and they said it's going to get even colder. <laughs> I've got my ski um, sweater on today. Not that I ski. <laughs> All righty. Well, I, I, I put that question out there about weaving in ends, because we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And um, it was kind of interesting. I got a lot of questions this week about... What are my techniques? What's right and what's wrong about joining in yarn and weaving in? And because we're doing our scrap happy crochet along this year, and I do cover it a little bit on those videos, I thought I'd talk about it a little bit. And we can also, I'm going to do a little bit of a demo over here with my other camera, just so that we can get an idea. And, and one thing, remember this. There is no wrong or right or proper way. There are just the ways that work best for some people. And it, it drives me nuts when people say that's the wrong way or that's the improper way or you must do it this way. Because one thing about crochet is it really depends on the thickness of the yarn, the stitch, and a lot of those kinds of things. So we're going to talk about that. And then we'll also talk about what's new and some things that are coming this week and next week on Posh Pooch Designs. All right. I think it's time for us to clink in, don't you? I have got regular old Folgers, but I've got caramel vanilla creamer. Yum. Let's clink in. Clinkity, clink, clink clink. <laughs> I have to be careful spinning my cup around because I accidentally spilt some a couple weeks ago. Remember when I spilt it? I spilt it like three times in one video. <laughs> I am so clumsy. I even fell in the snow this last week. I'm, I am just so clumsy. My, uh, the biggest issue is that I wear my Crocs out in the snow because they're right there by the door <clears throat> and I'm, I take the dogs out to go potty and I just slip on my Crocs, my Crocs. I guess I better put my snow boots by the front door this week. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see you all. I, I just also want to say, um, I know we've had some issues with some trolls lately. Don't let that depress you. Don't let it bother you. We're just going to keep right on going and having some fun. Okay. All right, let's get right into our conversation or our talk about weaving in. And I made some notes. And one of the things I was talking about a few seconds ago is it really does make a difference, the thickness of the yarn and the fiber of the yarn, how you weave it in. Because you can't, you know, like say a t-shirt yarn, you can't weave that in the same way you're going to weave in acrylic or wool. And so it's going to make a difference, you know. Cheryl says, I'm having the southeastern Colorado, and we are having the same weather. Yep, yep, it's cold and windy and snowy. Anyway, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a couple of things. This is what we're going to cover. We're going to cover, is it okay to stitch over your ends? We're going to cover stitching in the stitches or weaving in the stitches. We're going to also talk a little bit about how to go back and forth in the stitches and is it okay to use knots? Well, you know what? Sometimes it is. Depends on the fiber. We'll talk about that. And then the bottom line is there is no proper way. These are just my opinions. You do what works best for you. Okay? All right. Let's click over to our other camera here. I've got it all set up with a little swatch here. 
And this is just some bulky number five yarn. I am going to move my coffee because you all do not want me to spill it. <laughs> all right, here. So we have this little swatch. This is just, you know, eight stitches across, like four rows. It's, it's no big deal. And we're going to use this to demonstrate what we do when we change colors of yarn and weaving in. All right, so let's say I want to change to this blue yarn. I actually am going to use this lighter blue. I don't want to use that dark one. And these are the colors that I used for a bag that we did last Friday. All right, so if I want to bring in my new color, I'm going to bring it in. And whether this is single crochet, half double crochet, or um, triple crochet, double, single, whatever, always bring in your color before you do your chain one, two, three, or four, or whatever you're doing. And the reason is I'm doing double crochets here, so I'm going to chain three, and that chain three is going to count as a double crochet. And if I would have gone ahead and brought in my white, I would have one stitch in the wrong color. All right, so I'm going to turn my work, and let me go ahead and cut this so that you get a better idea. I don't know why I left that on there. All right, so here's my two ends, but I want to go ahead and do a row of this blue. So what I do is I take those two ends. I'm not tying a knot. I'm just putting them together like that. I'm going to put them across, and I'm going to stitch my next stitches. So my chain three counts as a double crochet, so I'll go in the next double crochet, and I'm stitching over those ends. Now, one of the things that someone said is those are going to come out, and they might do that. All right, so I'll usually stitch two or three over those ends, and then I'll go on with my project. Then when I'm done with my project, I'll bring this needle in, and you need to leave a little bit of end because you need to have enough room to weave that back in. One thing I do if my yarn is too short is I take the end of my needle, and I'll go through some of the fibers and stitches backwards. And that's just because I left too short of a tail of yarn. All right, then I'll thread that through and pull that back through. This gets it out of the way, and I would do the same thing with this blue one. All right, I want to pull this out, though. There we go. And let's go back to this. Get that up there. Go ahead and just make a chain one so we've got that there. All right, so when I'm weaving in, I want to leave enough tail so that I have enough to put my needle through that. All right, now you're usually going to, if you're on an end, you're going to go through some stitches, go through some of the fibers of the yarn and go one way, then turn. I usually go up a stitch going through fibers, and I go back up the way I came. The key to getting your weave in to stay is to go through fibers of the yarn and through the stitches. Now, a lot of people will just take their crochet hook, and they'll just go in here and just pull that in, and they'll just leave it. And then they'll wonder why that comes undone. All right. The key to keeping it from coming undone is to weave it back and forth with your needle. And then when it gets too short, I do that backwards thing. This is not a technical way of doing things. I just want to make sure that my end's going to stay in. Because sometimes I forget to cut a long enough tail. All right, and then you can just come back in and cut that off. All right, I want to try another thing real quick. All right, so I'm going to bring in this blue. Make sure I got enough tail this time. All right, so let's say I'm changing colors often. One, two, three chains. I'm going to stitch over those like we, like I showed you a second ago. You can stitch over your tails of yarn. The key to getting them to stay is to come back in and weave them in. All right. 
All right, so I'm going to move those out of the way, but what if I want to bring in a third color? All right, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to start my double crochet and then I'll bring in that next color. And this is what happens a lot of times when you're doing uh, something where there's a lot of color changes. All right, so I don't want to cut off my light color, but I want to bring in my dark color. So I'll go ahead and, we and stitch over that. Maybe I'm doing two of each color. All right. Now I'm going to change back to the first color. Like that. That's my chain threes down there. All right, so here's the front of my work. I have two stitches that are two different colors. Okay, so what I want to do on the back here, even though we stitched over those new colors, and this one I didn't, okay? So you can either stitch over like we did here or not. Both will work just fine. I just really like going over them for a couple of stitches and then weaving those ends in, okay? And when you do that, you want to try to stay in the same color. And so instead of going across, when I do a small section like that, I'll go up and down the stitch. I'm still going through the stitch. I'm still going through the fibers, but I'm going up and down the stitch instead of going across because I wanna make sure I stay in that same color. When we turn it over, we want a nice, crisp two stitches that are the right color that we're wanting in that color spot, okay? And that's just some things that I do. And like I said, the key to getting a good weave in is to stitch through the fibers and the stitches, and sometimes that's difficult. Let's see, I'm going through those fibers going across and coming back. And I might go up since this color is changing. Give it a little bit of a pull and clip. All right, now, as far as weaving in, it does really matter how thick your yarn is. And, and also the fiber that it's made out of. I mean, if it's made out of, say, t-shirt yarn, you're gonna have a really hard time going in those fibers. And so you're gonna probably want to go between the stitches, uh, not in between like the holes, but the little loops of the stitches and loop back and forth. But I am gonna tell you a little secret. Don't tell the other crochet designers, okay? <laughs> when it comes to really big, like chunky seven and eight yarns where you're making these great big stitches or um, fibers that you just can't get into with a needle, I'll go in between some of those and then I'll, don't tell anyone, I'll make a knot. Knots aren't perfect. Knots are, are not supposed to be in crochet, but those rules were made long before these big chunky fibers of yarn were made. <laughs> you know, if you've got some of that great big blanket yarn, I mean, and we're going to be dealing with some blanket yarn on our next Scrap Happy um, Crochet Along in March. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about how to secure your knots or your stitches with that blanket yarn because it is a little more difficult. And that's why I get a little frustrated, you know, when, when other crochet designers say you shouldn't stitch over your ends or you shouldn't tie knots. Listen, you've got to do what works best for you. And if you could, even if you were to find a needle with an eye in it that's big enough to put that big yarn through, you're not going to be able to get through those fibers. You're just not. And so you've got to do what works best for you. I like to use the technique, like I showed you, of stitching over those new yarns because it gets them down where they need to be. And then you can come back in with your needle and weave those in. Okay, so 
something that I always try to do is weave as I go. Weave it in as I go. If I do a circle, I try to weave that in as I go. If I do, say, a granny square and I'm changing colors, I really try to weave those in as I go. But for me, sometimes it's a little bit relaxing just to sit back and watch a, a Hallmark mystery movie or a movie with my husband on TV or something and just take the time and just weave those ends in. <laughs> Pamela says, I tie knots and I'm not ashamed of it. <laughs> sometimes you just have to. Where the spots are, sometimes they work best. Now, the other thing I want to say is a lot of people, um, sorry, my chair keeps scooting on my plastic thing. A lot of people complain about knots in yarn. And I just want you to understand that all yarn is going to have a knot or two from time to time. Now, if you get a skein of yarn, that has a whole bunch of knots in it, you can always take it back to the store where you bought it from. And Lion Brand and some of the other ones are really good about, you take a picture of it, they'll send you another skein, okay? But one thing you need to understand, when they're the these big machines are winding these uh, skeins and cakes of yarn, they're on these huge, like, uh, round bolts of um, yarn. And so they have to tie the new piece in. When they do that, they give you several extra yards, usually five or six, because they let it wind a little bit. They give you extra yardage in order to be able to cut those knots out and redo them. Now, I have talked a little bit about the Russian join, and it is a really great way to um, use uh, uh, adding in new colors. And I do it often when I'm doing a lot of Scrap Happy stuff. And I showed that on one of our Scrap Happy um, I think, I don't know if it was the first one in January I showed how to do that. And it's a really good join. It works really good. But when you get into the really thick yarns, you end up with this big mound of yarn that's not going to work. Okay. And that's another reason that sometimes I'll tie a knot, <laughs> you know, because you can tie a knot and hide it as long as it's a secure knot on some of those big chunky ones where um, some of the other ones, it's just not, you know, it's not going to work, okay? So, let me bottom line this for you. <laughs> there is no proper way or wrong way to weave in your ends. You have to do what works best for you and the fiber that you're using, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right, my yarny friends, let's talk about what happened this week at Posh Pooch Designs. Well, let's talk about last Friday real quick. We started our two-part shoulder bag, and someone asked me, why do I want to put rings on the ends of my bags? And it's so you can add little charms. There's a little lamb charm on there. Isn't that cute? All right, so last Friday we made the bag, and we learned how to make a I-cord with two colors. And I love this. A lot of times when you make a bag, the handles just stretch like crazy. Now, you're going to get a little bit of stretch with this, but not like some of the other ones that we've done. And so I really like this style. It's fun. It's two colors. And this is our little shoulder bag. It's just the perfect size to fit your wallet, your phone, and maybe your keys and go. That's why I called it the Let's Go bag, because you can just grab it and let's go. <laughs> now, this Friday that's coming up, I'm going to show you how to line a bag. And that's why I wanted to do a smallish bag so that the first time, if you've never done it before, you can learn, it's super easy. And you don't have to have a sewing machine, but if you do have one and you wanna use it, you can. All right, let me just give you a little heads up. <clears throat> You're gonna need some fabric. And I've just got this little fabric I'm gonna use, got little dog bones on it. It's a cotton fabric. Now, if you're not a sewer and you don't have fabric, like this is from my yarn stash, or my, sorry, my fabric stash. <clears throat> if you don't have um, fabric, what you can do, there's a lot of different things you can use for fabric to line a bag. My husband retired now, so I can use his dress shirts. Nice fabric for lining bags. Maybe an old pillowcase, <clears throat> or maybe some old sheets where maybe the corner's torn, and so you don't want to use it anymore. Sheets make great fabric for lining bags and different things. If you don't have any of those things and you want to get some fabric really inexpensive, 
you can go to Hobby Lobby, Michael's, Joann's, or just about, I think even Walmart has them, any craft store or store that has crafts, and pick up two bandanas. Those square bandanas, they are perfect for lining bags, and I use them all the time. And they have solids and lots of prints, okay? So you're going to need two pieces of fabric, about 12 by 12, okay? And then all you need besides that is scissors, needle, and thread, okay? And I'm going to show you how to easily line a bag, and we're, I think you're going to like doing it because it's super fun and super easy. And you can adjust it to any size bag that you have, all right? Now, the other thing we did this week was the super chunky bucket hat. I designed this pattern, I'm going to say 2017, and um, I decided I wanted to update the pattern. Well, I got in this yarn, and I'm going to show this. I've showed this to you before. This is the Premier Color Fusion Chunky. This is the one that we used called Maui. And I ordered in two other colors. This one is called, where did it go? Autumn Sky. Isn't that gorgeous? I love that one. And then this one, I think it was called, oh, Cotton Candy. I was going to say Bubblegum. Cotton Candy. It's super pretty. Also, you can make one of these hats with just one of these skeins. Okay, so, and I chose to use the Maui one because it's super pretty. It's got beiges and different colors of blues. It's so pretty. And it's stitched up just gorgeous. Okay, this is not a sun hat, just so you know. This is a winter fun bucket hat. It's chunky and warm and cute. And we're, we're learning how to make those triple crossover stitches, and it makes it super fun. And it's great for the guys and the girls, depending on what their favorite colors are. There is one behind me. I'm going to see if I can swing around. Where did I put that? Oh, it's right there on my shoulder. That shoulder. <laughs> that I did in beige. And, and you can see, I did that one in beige for the demo. So I think you'll really like making that. It was a lot of fun. Now, the other thing we did this week, and I'm going to switch to my other camera. This is our um, Filet Hearts Wrap Shawl. And I tried to open it up a little bit so you can see those big hearts on there. It's just gorgeous. And the yarn that we use, let me flip back over here, is this yarn. This is the Karen Crystal Cakes. It's like a purple amethyst. And if you haven't seen this yet, the threads that are going through it, it's like a mixture of silver and gold spun together and then spun through this yarn and it is beautiful and they have several colors of it i just went with the purple because you know yeah bright yellow is my favorite color but purple is like my second favorite color because it's my birthstone and so we did that it's, it's a lot easier than you think and it's super easy to adjust wider or shorter but um that one's for me <laughs> it's mine <laughs> Okay, now, I think we covered everything except, did you know today is 22222? I was like this close to changing our time to 222 in the afternoon. <laughs> but I couldn't do it. <laughs> it's so fun. Okay, <clears throat> I love that sort of thing. Um, numbers are not my thing. That's why I have to have my patterns tested over and over again. <laughs> I have some great people who love numbers. You know what's funny is even my granddaughter, who's nine, she loves numbers and she'll read through things and say, um, Oma, you know eight and eight is 16, right? You know, <laughs> she's super fun. Okay, so <clears throat> one other thing I wanted to tell you, next week uh, for our live video, we're going to talk just a little bit, I think either next week or the week after. I haven't quite decided because I have to get it together, of course. You know, I got to get things together, <clears throat> but I am going to coming up. We are going to do a video on blocking because I get a lot of questions about blocking and why do we have to do it? When do we have to do it? What's the purpose? It's just going to come undone anyway. You know, all of those questions. And so we're going to be covering that in a week or so. I haven't, I think it might be two weeks from Tuesday. <clears throat> Hang on two seconds. Okay. <clears throat> Today is my son-in-law's birthday. Well, happy birthday to your son-in-law. I was trying to think. I think the next birthday is my son's 
in May, and then my other granddaughter is going to be 13. My grandkids are growing up way too fast. <laughs> Callie is uh, the my granddaughter, my uh, Aiden and Callie that visit in the summer. You've seen Callie on the video sometimes. She is my little artist. She loves to paint and draw and create. She's kind of like, um, her and I are kind of kindred spirits when it comes to the art. My granddaughter that's nine is the gymnast. That girl can flip and cartwheel anywhere. <laughs> She's even done it in Walmart. <laughs> She just loves it. She loves she loves gymnastics. And then my grandson, who is 14, he plays the trumpet and another instrument called euphonium, euphonium or something like that. And he loves it. He loves music. So all my grandkids are artists. <laughs> I wonder where they get that from. <laughs> all righty. Well, I'm going to let you go. It's been a fun day. I love reading all your comments. And remember... I am so thankful for all of you. You all just brighten my day. I love reading your comments. I love... Did I finish my spring blanket pattern? The design is finished. The pattern is in the uh, process of being written. And just to give you an outlook of how that works, I was just going to let you go, but let me talk about this for two seconds. When I design a pattern, I work up the design. Then I have to type up the design. Then we have to make sure it's right. It has to be tested. Then pictures have to be taken and edited. And from beginning to end is usually about six to eight weeks, just so you can kind of know. I'm planning on end of March, 1st of April for the spring blanket pattern. And I really love it. I'm thinking about calling it the rambling rainbow blanket because the, the yarn that we're using is that rainbow from uh, Michael's Craftsmart. And it's not, an, it's not even rainbow stripes. It's kind of random rainbow stripes. I love the idea of calling it the rambling rainbow blanket. So, yeah, maybe end of April, I mean, end of March, 1st of April, I'm pretty sure it'll be ready, okay? So that gives you some time to get the yarn. You're going to need four skeins of that and then another skein of white, just so if you want to pick it up. It's the Michaels Craft Smart Rainbow. I think it's called Jackard. Jacquard? <laughs> I always say it wrong. People always correct me. <clears throat> okay, on that note, I'm going to let you go. Thank you all for tuning in. I love you all, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye now.